Shall we be honest? If future generations look back at us today, they will surely wonder about our dysfunctional and destructive collective behaviors. I believe there's one main reason for the problems we're facing today, bad philosophy. To explain what this means, I want to take you on a journey of the mind. By the end of it, I hope to have radically changed the way you think about reality. My journey began quite a while ago. It all started with a random encounter as a young teenager. A chemistry teacher lent me a popular science book on physics. The weirdness of the quantum world immediately captivated me, igniting my passion for science. Unfortunately, studying theoretical physics only resulted in more questions than answers regarding the fundamental nature of reality. Although later specializing in complexity science did help a little bit. But stumbling upon philosophy changed everything. So let's begin our journey. Over 300 years ago, we really started to understand how nature works. We call this classical physics. Everything seemed clear. The universe was a machine, a giant clockwork. By analyzing its tiniest components, we should be able to understand everything. Great. Unfortunately, the year 1905 changed everything. We then discovered the quantum world, and things got really weird. The existential crisis that followed was quite alarming. Albert Einstein complained that it was as if the ground had been pulled out from under one. The foundations of reality made no sense. Shut up and calculate. That was the coping mechanism of physicists. As a result, science continued to advance, but our philosophy remained stagnant. Then, in 1994, another huge crack emerged in our modern understanding of the world. Now, more personal. A young philosopher went on stage at a conference to talk about what he called the hard problem of consciousness. David Chalmers had no way of knowing how far-reaching his ideas would be. In a nutshell, the hard problem is the question of how and why non-conscious stuff comes together and produces conscious stuff. In other words, what is this personal and subjective perspective, our window into reality that emerges from inanimate matter? As a result, Today, 30 years later, we have two main proposed answers in what we call the philosophy of mind. Either your consciousness is not what it seems to be, or reality is not what it seems to be. Honestly, both options are quite unsettling. The supporters of the first proposition believe that consciousness isn't really a big deal and that the hard problem is just simply made up. The backers of the second idea propose something that could not be more different, called metaphysical idealism. OK, that sounds scary, so let's unpack. Metaphysics is simply the part of philosophy that deals with the fundamental nature of reality. It begins where physics ends. That is to say, metaphysics cannot be proven or disproven. If you think this sounds weird, well, actually, you cannot know anything for sure. Are you dreaming right now? Is this a simulation? Is anything real? Well, who knows? Now, metaphysical idealism claims that there is a hidden layer of reality that is both fundamental and mental. In other words, Consciousness is the essence of existence. OK, but what does that actually really mean? Well, clever people have tried to give us ways of thinking about idealism, unfortunately, without much success. Just try and imagine a field of consciousness that is non-physical and transpersonal. I know, right? But more on this later. So the nature of consciousness is a metaphysical affair. 
as is the interpretation of theoretical physics. So shut up and calculate isn't really an option, especially as physics hasn't progressed much in the last decades in understanding the foundations of reality. Indeed, in my experience, many physicists still today shy away from the many metaphysical problems challenging us. To give you an idea of how deep the rabbit hole could go, some physicists now believe that space and time are in fact not fundamental at all, but derived from something deeper, something called entangled quantum information. Sounds really cool, and this is physics shorthand for that idea. Then, science is quite silent on why there is so much complexity everywhere around us and in us. The orthodox response is to shrug and say, well, that's just how things are. So, is this it? Are we really condemned to inhabit a reality we will never understand? I really don't think so. I'm convinced that the Western mind is suffering from cultural blind spots and metaphysical prejudice. But things are slowly changing. On the horizon, we are seeing a new scientific paradigm emerge, one that does not ignore the metaphysical challenges of physics and that sees consciousness as fundamental. So, equipped with a new kind of science that is informed and guided by a brave new philosophy, you can start to look for new existential answers. Indeed, a new generation of scientists and philosophers are starting to explore beyond the status quo. Some have a suspicion. Perhaps rationality, common sense and logic aren't concepts reality is very concerned about. Perhaps we haven't progressed in understanding ourselves and the cosmos because of a lack of metaphysical imagination. I could not agree more. In fact, I've just finished my second book describing this ongoing paradigm shift towards idealism. What I really want to emphasize is that this new perspective has one important quality. Although it cannot be understood rationally, it can be fully experienced and always has been. Since the dawning of the human mind, people have encountered immaterial levels of reality firsthand, either spontaneously or deliberately. We have many accounts of shamans, mystics, meditators and psychonauts who have described their cosmological explorations in great detail. Some people will be surprised to hear that they all are daring navigators of otherworldly realms. In fact, the friendly-looking couple here, the Shulgins, has probably experienced more levels of reality than any other humans. Okay, so our sober waking consciousness is just one competing state in a vast multiverse of pure experience, just waiting to be explored by anyone who is brave enough to go beyond the comforting familiarity of consensus reality. Dreams, meditation, trance, chemicals, or even pain can all function as interdimensional portals within our brains. This capacity could actually be an important part of what it means to be human. I began my journey with a rational mind, but I now fully appreciate the difference between theoretical knowledge and experiential knowledge. We are given an alternative to the metaphysics implicitly adopted by most scientists. This is a very disenchanted outlook in which the cosmos, including life and consciousness, is seen as totally pointless and random. No wonder we seem to be suffering from a loss of meaning, a spiritual disconnect. 
We've been exploring the outer world in so much detail for so long that we've forgotten to look for answers within ourselves. I now truly believe that a scientific spirituality becomes possible. This is to say that we're once again invited to become enchanted by the architecture of reality, its magnificent design and its interconnected unity. And rediscovering ourselves at the center of our own experienceable universe is a truly empowering realization, a realization making us accountable. For me, this is also the antithesis of dogmatic religious belief. Some people are giving us clear glimpses of this new worldview. As an example, a pioneering complexity scientist at the age of over 80, not too long ago, said, there is an intelligence behind the things that exist in the universe. There is purpose exhibited by this intelligence. And it is humanly possible to access some elements of this intelligence. Here, Erwin Laszlo is also insisting that these metaphysical claims are experienceable. They're empirical in some sense. Okay, so here our journey ends. We are truly living in a brave new world of unprecedented potential where future utopias or dystopias could possibly only be separated by a thought, an idea able to replicate and spread in our minds and result in collective, intelligent human behavior. For the first time in history, we have the opportunity to embrace a scientific, spiritual vision of existence. Let's do so and start by exploring the depths of our inner world. Thank you.